Hey friends, what's good? Welcome to Marsiology. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down what muscle and fat is respectively. And through that, we can understand how they relate to each other and how our body adapts and changes as we train. I'm going to be talking about some things that are great to know when you are training for weight loss or muscle building. Alright, first things first, let's talk a little bit about fat. Now, I know this is a super sensitive topic, but it is also one of the main three macronutrients um, that our body requires to function. Other than carbohydrates and proteins, fats are also very important. Today we're really going to be talking about the chemical and technical component of fat and which fats really benefit our functions as human beings. Fats, other known as triglycerides, are basically these small tiny little fatty acids that get stored in our bodies from calories that we don't use right away. Examples of these might be unsaturated fats, which are the good fats. Um, you can get them in avocados, olives, nuts, seed, fatty fish. Then we have saturated fats, which we can get from meats, dairy products, cheese, um, coconut oil. They're considered moderate fats. We can benefit from them. And then we have trans fats, which are the fast foods, the pizza, the fries, the nuggets, all of that goodness. Not necessarily great for us. So based on these three fats, you kind of have a good idea of what you're really putting in your body and if you're not exercising that will get stored as fat cells. Now the three most important fatty acids that you should definitely know alpha linoleic acid also known as ALA. So these are omega-3 acids that can be found in vegetables. You can find them in kale, spinach, uh, seeds, nuts, so like chia, flax, hemp, or walnuts, and they can be found occasionally in some grass-fed animals. So contrary to what people believe that cholesterol will elevate your risk of getting heart diseases, ALA actually reduces that risk. So there are some fats that are essentially good for you. So the second and third essential fatty acids, you should definitely keep these in your mind. Icosapentaenoic acid, otherwise known as EPA, and docosahexaenoic acid, otherwise known as DHA. Very cool words that you don't need to know how to spell. Please consume them inside your body. EPA is really good for reducing inflammation and skin conditions, and they're also proven to help with depression. DHA is great for your eyes and your skin. Girls, please remember you want these fats in your body. So both EPA and DHA can be found in fatty fishes and in seafood. Um, however, because we don't know exactly how much nutrients are in everything that we eat, it's also recommended that we take supplements, omega-3, 6, or 9. You need to know, one pound of fat in the body is equal to 3,500 calories. Our body functions as an energy converter. When we start exercising, our metabolism becomes more functional, more efficient, everything that we consume, we're able to burn it at a faster speed. So for example, if you're trying to lose five pounds in five weeks, that's basically one pound a week. Divided by 3,500 calories, that's 500 worth of caloric expenditure per day. Basically calories that you need to burn. Please note that if you are trying to lose more than two pounds per week, that is probably not the recommended and safest way to go, you would really want to see a dietitian or a doctor if you're trying to lose more than that. So ways to do this, you could be at a caloric deficit, which means you are taking less than your normal recommended calorie intake. And you can have an added caloric expenditure. So you're eating a little bit less, you're burning a little bit more. Ideally, you do not want to starve yourself um, and go past 300 calories 
lower than your normal caloric intake. Just wanted to say this though, your weight on the scale is really just a number. When you're standing on a scale, you can't really tell how much fat or how much muscle mass is in your body. You could definitely go to the gym or buy one of those body composition uh, scales online, but even then, um, probably the one in the gym is a little bit more accurate. You really want to rely on how you feel about your current health status. Are you feeling strong and active or are you feeling tired and slow? If you tend to feel weaker in your arms or your lower back or your legs, there is probably more fat mass than muscle mass in that part of your body. But there's nothing wrong with that. We can teach our muscles to adapt to our training we can lose the fat mass and increase the muscle mass and help us function better every day. Now that we're done talking about fat, let's move on to muscle. So the top two reasons people come to a trainer is to either lose fat or gain muscle. And occasionally you have someone who comes in and they want to lose weight without growing muscle. To all the trainers that have ever heard someone say that to them, a moment of silence. Well, that's simply not possible because we have muscles in our body already. I think what they're trying to say is they don't want to get bulky. So what is a muscle? These miniature biceps? For sure. Muscles are basically tiny little fibers wrapped in a bundle and attached to your bone. We all have muscle. That is how we move around. Our bones do not carry itself. The muscles are moving the bone. Now, just like clothing, you can have really heavy knit sweaters and a really light t-shirt, and that depends on the thickness of the fiber. Same with muscles. How do our muscles grow? So the constant contraction and extension when we're training, when we flex, when we rest, it breaks these muscles apart, we eat some protein, they heal, they get a little bit bigger. So we don't increase the number of fibers. Our fibers just get thicker with training. Here's what you need to know. Three types of muscle fibers. These fibers are differentiated based on the speed in which they contract. First, we've got the slow twitch muscle. As you can see from the name, they contract slower. So these are muscles that help us get through low to moderate um, intensity and long duration exercises. So it's really about endurance. This could be aerobic workouts, uh, running, jogging, circuit training, resistance with body weight or light weight. So if you're doing exercises that uses mainly the slow twitch fibers, if your exercise is longer than 30 minutes, you're gonna start burning fat because your body starts to run out of energy from carbs and it's gonna start using fat. When you're training for slow twitch fibers in your body, it's really great for increasing your aerobic capacity, your endurance levels, and it's really going to lower your resting heart rate. Second type, we've got the fast twitch type 1. So these guys are kind of in the middle. They will adapt based on your training. They could be slow twitch or they could be strong fast twitch. If you want to train for fast twitch type A muscles, you're more likely going to be doing HIIT workouts, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, maybe with added weight for that extra intensity so that you're activating the fast twitch muscles than just slow twitch. Tabata is also a great option as well, which is kind of like HIIT workouts, but they're a little bit shorter, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, or kickboxing. These are also great ways to train for fast twitch type A muscles. The third type is the fast twitch type B. Now these types of muscles are a little bit more challenging for fitness beginners because while you're still working on your endurance and your aerobic capacity and your stability and your mobility, like you do not want to move on to strength training right away. These muscles will start developing through very high intensity, short duration. Now these could be resistance training with very heavy weights low repetitions, longer rest. You can also train them through explosive movements that require a lot of power. 
which is basically speed and force. So for people who are worried about getting bigger, you're not likely going to get big unless you participate in strength training that utilizes fast twitch type B muscles. People who train for these type of muscles will generally get bigger and have a very obvious muscle definition. But because muscle is more dense than fat, the more muscle you gain, your weight is more likely going to go up as well. So those are the three types of muscle fibers that you need to know. Now I want you to think about your training routine and ask yourself, what type of muscles are you training for? You basically have genetically about 50% of these slow twitch muscles and we have 50% of the fast twitch muscles. Now according to how we train train them, the percentages might vary, but it's still going to be relatively quite balanced. So depending on what you train for, you are going to get better at it. If you train for the fast twitch more than the slow twitch, your muscles are going to get very powerful. If you are going to focus on training for the slow twitch, your endurance levels can go up, you can probably train for a marathon, aerobic workouts don't make you feel like you're gasping for air. Our body basically adapts according to how we want to condition it. And once you decide what you want to train for, then you can better pick all the workouts that's available on Instagram, on YouTube, and cater them to your own needs. Don't be afraid to pick different types of training as well. The more you train, the more likely your metabolism is going to speed up and help you burn that fat. So it's really not about that weight on the scale, it's about how much you move, how hard you train. So if you guys want to see a video about how to program your training in a week, in a month, in three months progression, hit the comments below, let me know. If you like this video and were able to take something away from it, please hit that. Thank you guys for watching, have a great week, stay safe, stay moving, and I'll see you in my next video.